Hi, I'm Femi Oke, and you're in the stream. Today, why are Palestinian rights activists asking young Jews to return the birthright? I'm Malika Bilal. We take a look at the controversy around the Taglit Birthright Israel program. Do you have questions or comments about the trip or even gone on it yourself? Tell us about it in the YouTube chat, and we'll do our best to include your comments in the conversation. Since 1999, Taglit Birthright Israel has enabled thousands of young Jewish people around the world to visit Israel. The non-profit program takes participants on an all-expenses-paid journey through the country, but Palestinian rights activists say the trip whitewashes the Israel-Palestine conflict, effectively ignoring the occupation. Critics have also questioned the ethics of the program, noting the inability of Palestinians in the diaspora to return to their ancestral homeland. In July 2018, a small group of Birthright Israel participants from the activist group If Not Now walked off the trip, protesting what they called the erasure of the Palestinian experience. Supporters of the program have accused demonstrators of using a free trip to make a political statement at the expense of people who might not otherwise be able to afford it. But groups like Jewish Voice for Peace say young Jews should recognize the dispossession of Palestinians and reject the program. Take a listen to what JVP campus coordinator Maya Ettery said about the Return the Birthright campaign. Returning the birthright is not only about boycotting all birthright programs, but also about fighting for Palestinian refugees to be able to return home. So when we say return the birthright, we're saying young Jews support Palestinian right of return. Well, to help us understand the purpose of the trip and the criticism it's received, Ariel Sobel is a writer based in Los Angeles, California. She attended Birthright Israel as a first year university student. In Denver, Colorado, Ben Fields is an academic advisor who witnessed the protests by the If Not Now activists. On set, Bethany Zaman is the spokeswoman for the If Not Now group, and she was one of five women who walked off their birthright trip in July. And Taha Hisala is associate director of outreach for the group American Muslims for Palestine. Hello, everybody. It's really good to have you here. Uh, I'm just curious for our international audience who may not be familiar with the birthright trips. What is it like to go on a birthright trip? Why would you do it? Ben, you start. Um, it's, it's a life-changing experience. Um, I think for me and for, for a lot of people on my trip and people I've spoken to have gone on the trip, they sign up for it because it's a free trip to Israel. It's a chance mm -hmm. to go somewhere they haven't been before. Um, and then it turns into a life-changing cultural experience. Maybe it's a spiritual experience, a religious experience, uh -huh. a chance to experience a culture that, um, for a lot of American Jews, we know very, very little about. You're very honest there with this free trip to Israel. Is it did you see it when you were younger? Is it like a holiday? Did you go on holiday? Yeah, holiday is yeah. the, the right word. Um, I think yeah. um, I didn't really see it as, uh, when I was younger, but more sort of coming into sort of young adulthood. But uh -huh. it's it's a experience, I think, more than it is a holiday. And it's an opportunity to learn. Ariel? So I wouldn't call it a holiday at all. Um, I would say that it's like a pilgrimage, uh, just as many uh, Muslims visit Mecca to visit the holiest sites in Islam. Jerusalem has the holiest sites in the Jewish religion. So it is a rare opportunity where people, regardless of how much money you can make, can visit the holiest sites in the world for your religion. Um, and also experience, most American Jews are Jews in places that are even more discriminatory Tory towards Jews like France and England. It's the one experience you can have in your life in a place where you're not a minority, where your identity is not on the fringe, where it is normal to be a Jew. And it's also a really big part of a lot of Jewish people finding connection to their roots because it is safer for most Jews to assimilate to American or French or whatever Western culture. So therefore, this is a place where they don't have to assimilate and they have the full freedom to live in their Jewish identity. So it's a really immensely meaningful experience that is um, has no social or class discrimination, which is really meaningful to a lot of people from a lot of walks of life. Mm. A couple people online that would agree with you there, Ariel. This is Anna on Twitter. She says, I went on Birthright in 2002. I would never have been able to afford it on my own, and I'm so, I'm so glad for the experience. Another person writes, uh, Eli, says, I went on Birthright, and its intent is to reconnect Jews with their heritage and roots. It was not a political trip, 
And any time something was brought up, both sides were represented. And he showed a, a T-shirt of one of the uh, ones that they wore on their trip there. Bethany, I want to bring you in here because he talks about it not being a political trip. Is that how you felt? So it's marketed very much as apolitical, uh, but I would say it apoliticalness is uh, kind of a false idea for anything, and especially to bring a group of people to a place like Israel, which is so political, there's really no such thing as an apolitical trip. How did you find your experience? Um, I met some lovely people, and I did see some really meaningful and important sites. Um, but it was also an incredibly disconcerting experience. Um, I don't I don't think that I was able to engage in a meaningful conversation with my peers about um, things that are really important to me. So what my Jewish identity is rooted in, which is kind of this legacy of social activism and um, what it means to be in Israel while, while the occupation of Palestine is happening. Um, and we weren't able to really have um, authentic, genuine conversation about the occupation while on the trip. So I, I, I want to play uh, some of the PR material that's used for birthright, so young people, uh, Jewish people, uh, can see what's in store for them, what kind of impact it might be. Ben said it was a life-changing impact, a uh, life-changing trip. So I'm just going to play a little bit of this, and I would love to hear your reaction. I feel more Jewish than I did before. I feel more connected to it because I can tell you about my experiences and I can tell you about the history of the people. Why Jewish? You're not you're not Christian-ish, you're not Catholic-ish. Like why why is there this ish thrown in there? Go out and like be a Jew. That sort of like was like the final like ugh in my heart. I definitely feel a new sense of connection with my family. My trip gave me a better understanding of what like my grandmother's family had gone through and practiced. And I definitely understand myself better after the trip. The journey certainly did not end when I got home. How could I say that it ended when I have relationships that are still burgeoning? I feel very comfortable in Israel. I feel very at home with Israelis. Ta. I mean, I think it's, um... It's totally uh, great that uh, young Jews have a place to feel at home. Uh, however, not at the expense of the indigenous Palestinian people. Uh, I think it's absolutely uh, ludicrous that a young Jewish boy or girl from Boston or Philadelphia or New York can arrive at Tel Aviv airport and claim citizenship uh, to a land they have no absolutely no connection to besides their religious connection to, to, the, to the land, while a few miles south in Gaza, Palestinian youth are dying, uh, being shot and killed by Israeli snipers, uh, simply trying to return to their indigenous homeland. So I think the, 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 the contradiction is so um, clear, and I think that uh, young Jews um, uh, are, are, are seeing what's clearly in front of them, that Israel is an apartheid state engaged in the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. And that's why we see such a big uh, break uh, among Jewish youth. And maybe uh, uh, we could talk about that a little bit too. Adel, go ahead. Um, I, I would love to discuss um, why it's important for someone like me to be able to immigrate to Israel. So, and this is a rising problem all over the world right now. Um, a large majority of Jews in England fear that they will have to leave England because the government is so anti-Semitic. So I'm a first generation American. Uh, my father was born on displaced persons camp for Auschwitz survivors, both his, my grandparents were in Auschwitz. And historically, Jewish people have no place to go and have no place to exist. And the majority of people who have claimed citizenship in Israel are indeed refugees. And the people who are trying to claim it, for example, Kaifeng Jews in China, where it is illegal to be Jewish and you'll be persecuted for being Jewish, and most of them have been murdered by Mao Zedong's government. The majority of the Jews who live in Israel are actually from Mizrahi, so they're actually indigenous to the same part of the world as Palestinians and are racially exactly the same as Palestinians. And they have condemned groups like If Not Now and Jewish Voice for Peace recently. They 
asked um, the Jewish, indigenous to Middle East and North Africa, who are ethnically exactly the same, just different in religion as Palestinians, asked Jewish Voice for Peace to remove all references to Mizrahi and Sephardic history and so literature. I, I, just because uh, you could you could talk for the entire program, you are a well-known speaker. What I wanted to get to your point, your point is that Jewish people, young Jewish people, feel disconnected and the trip helps them connect. Is that the point you're no, making? No, that's not my point. All right, make, my it, point very, make saying, it very briefly. Sure. My point is he's claiming that Jewish people shouldn't have a right to return when Jewish people are at risk and most people come to Israel refugees. The existence of Israel and the existence of the right of return is imperative for Jews who are under siege and fearing for their lives across the world. That doesn't mean that Palestinian rights and Palestinian right of return should exist separate to that. But to erase the fact that anti-Semitism and fear for Jewish people around the world comes from a very white, very privileged concept of Jewish life that most of, if not now, and people like JVP represent. They are wealthy kids from America who have no knowledge of actually being marginalized for being Jewish. So it's really easy for them to okay. not I feel hear, any I hear, I hear your point. Let's get some other people into the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, uh, again, claiming that young children, teenagers, grew up their entire lives in America, their grandparents grew up in America, uh, have a right to return to a land that they have no connection to is ludicrous. I'm sorry, but How can there you say is... had no connection to Israel? That's insane. There... How can you say that? My entire religion revolves around Israel. I'm How not saying say I'm not saying no that Jews have no connection to Israel. I'm saying I'm saying that I'm saying that when you when young Jews participate in birthright and erase the existence of Palestinians and do not demand the right to return for Palestinians, they are effectively engaged in the process of ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, erasing the Palestinian people and their history from that land. Many Jews who so, come to birthright do encourage that. It's not a monolith. Many Jews who are Zionists, most American Jews believe in a two-state solution and believe in, in the self-determination of Palestinians. But if we're talking most about the birthright program in particular, in we know for a fact that birthright upon, upon arrival hands out maps to young Jews that erase entirely the West Bank. It doesn't so erase them. We, we, we've seen, I, I we've seen the fair. things that, I mean, there's been coverage on this. This is, this is nothing new, you know, and maybe you could talk about this as well. The West Bank on them that I was given by my birthright tour guides. Um, and, and when we press them, why isn't the West Bank on this map? I mean, the West Bank is internationally recognized. They, they said they refused to, to recognize it um, and, and pulled on very old Islamophobic tropes to justify that. Um, so I'm not surprised you as someone in If Not Now are calling Jewish establishment Islamophobic. Um, that's a big narrative in a lot of If Not Now's programming. You guys have tweeted out that Jewish establishment is Islamophobic. And that's probably why If Not Now is very much reviled by Jewish youth, you know, 92% of Jews identify as pro-Israel, though very critical of Israel's policy, uh, policies. I do believe that personally, I think the occupation needs to end and the discrimination against Palestinians is abhorrent. The current government of Israel is abhorrent. I cannot stand it. I'll take but a pause GDP because we've got four people this in this conversation. Take a pause for a moment. We have four people in this conversation and everybody following online as well. So hold tight for a moment, just so we can share the conversation. You're making your points very strongly. Malika. So I want to actually pick up on a point that you ended there with, Ariel. You said that you abhor the occupation. Our community would definitely agree. Uh, people online. So this is a tweet that is circulating around JVPPSU says, as a young Jew, I hashtag return the birthright because a free trip on stolen land doesn't define my Judaism. We also heard from Arabs, though, people of Palestinian descent who, who told us very touching, poignant stories about how these trips make them feel. Here's a comment we got from Ronnie Allen. He's the co-founder of the Palestine Solidarity Alliance uh, of Hunter College. And here's what he told the stream. I call on young Jews to boycott birthrights because as a Palestinian American, I am banned from entering my own land. But meanwhile, birthright offers a free trip exclusively for Jews with the aim of whitewashing the Israeli military occupation and maintaining the denial of the refugee right of return. We need our allies to stand on the right side of history by undoing complicity in their home communities rather than partake in a trip funded by the government of Benjamin Netanyahu. So, Ben, he mentions whitewashing there. What's your take on this? I don't think that's a fair characterization of what the trip is. I think it's easy to say that it's whitewashing because you want to see what you want to see. And that was what we felt like um, a lot of us on our trip with the folks that walked off, is they saw what they wanted to see. 
they kept talking about a map that doesn't show the West Bank, and yet the maps we got clearly delineated the official political boundaries based on different treaties from different years. You know, we pointed out where the security fence or border wall or whatever it is that people want to call it, we pointed it out every time we passed it. We had open conversation about it. And honestly, it was a chance for us to see what that occupation looks like in real life. It was a chance for Jews from America who are, often feel very disconnected from this Israeli, um, from Israeli politics, sort of, we see it from afar, but it was a chance for us to actually see it in person and then get a sense for how do we reconcile our Judaism with the Israeli government. And again, like going on birthright is not an endorsement of the Netanyahu government. It's not an endorsement of the occupation. It's a chance to connect with our roots, to connect with our culture, and to connect with young Jews from across the country. So I think it's much more than just saying, like, I don't think it's fair to characterize going on this trip as an endorsement of the occupation of the Netanyahu government. I think that's actually been a really big um, point for If Not Now. Um, and, and for this birthright campaign in particular, right? So a lot of the discomfort that I experienced and that those that I walked off with experienced um, were the connections drawn between Netanyahu and Trump on our trip. Um, particularly, we went on different trips, but around the map um, and, and around the border wall, right? I was in or on my birthright trip while the kind of scandal broke about Trump administration detaining children at the border and separating them from their parents. And the correlations were just so, so clear for us. And the kind of rising neo-fascism that's shared by both Trump and Netanyahu. And, and I was on a different trip than Ben, and trips are run by different providers. but. Our, our guide and our providers weren't open to that discussion. So, Bethany, let's be very transparent about yeah. this. If not now, what are you trying to do? Did you deliberately go on a trip knowing that at some point you were going to get off the trip, that you, it was a protest and you were going to try and be as disruptive as possible to try and make Birthright maybe review their program and how they talk about Israel? I went on the trip very critical. So I did go on the trip intending to ask questions, to potentially make people uncomfortable and have conversations. I did not know that I would be walking off my birthright trip when I went on. Um, so I was really hoping that I could engage with my community and ask uncomfortable questions and together we could kind of learn about the occupation and maybe per push the kind of institution of birthright a little a little further towards transparency, towards the left, towards being open to this conversation. So you can honestly say you weren't deliberately trying to disrupt this entire visit, the program. You didn't come with that in mind because I'm going to show a clip right now mm -hmm. of you on a bus and you are reading a statement yes. off your phone. Mm -hmm. So you didn't That's plan that. that Nobody else. helped you work. I that wrote out. that statement the morning before, before I left at like 2 a.m. Um, we decided about, me and the group of women um, who were on the trip with me decided about halfway through the trip that okay. we were going to right. So let me play this for everybody. So this is what it looks like when uh, people who object to the birthright tour decide that they're going to disrupt it. Have a look. Um, we've been asking questions and trying to engage and um, we have not been able to do that. And as a result, the five of us will be leaving um, as we get off the bus. We'll be going on a trip with Breaking the Silence to learn about the occupation um, from the perspectives of Palestinians thank and you, IDF thank soldiers. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Um, Let's get off, please. We've appreciated please. the chance. Please, whose bottles are these, by the way? Let's go, guys. And, um, right now, you all, right now, right now you, all, you need to sign a waiver if you, need, if you want to go. Okay, and you can't leave the program before we do the final session. And this is not fair to me and to the rest of the group. Thank it's you not, very much. It's not personal. Like, We're really excited what happens there when activists stand up. Here's another account. This is a separate trip. Emily on Twitter says, yesterday, and she wrote this in December, my third day after getting kicked off birthright for asking about the separation wall, I found myself standing in front of the Kalendia checkpoint in East Jerusalem at 5 a.m. She goes on to tell a story that includes this tweet in which she says, Palestinians enter the cages behind this, this wall, this checkpoint, wait however long it takes and hope that today they don't miss school or work or a doctor's appointment because the border guard is having a bad day. So these are the conversations that some people are saying they wanted to have. On the other side of that debate, though, we got a video comment from someone who says she did have those conversations. This is Leah. She's uh, from Brooklyn. And here's what she told the stream. My name is Leah Rosenzweig. I live in Brooklyn, New York. 
When I went on birthright about two years ago, I wanted to go initially because my grandparents were Holocaust survivors and it was important for me to understand Israel as a safe place for Jews in the world. But I also understood that given the state of Israel and its occupation of Palestine today, it's important to have more nuanced and complex conversations about what's going on. In my group, I was lucky to have those kinds of talks with my fellow participants, and I hope all groups can have the same experience. So those talks, were those things, Ariel, that you uh, participated in or happened on your trip, or do you think they're ones that should have happened? Yeah, I did. I actually had some of the most heated conversations about um, Israel in my entire life on my birthright trip. Uh, and actually, there was like a lot of contention I had with other Americans and with Israelis about the occupation. It was discussed pretty heavily. And although um, I don't know if to speak for you as a spokesperson from If Not Now, but If Not Now has a web page devoted for arranging disruptions of birthright trip. You can. It's called Not Just a Trip. trip uh, dot or, com, and you can tell them if you're attending a birthright trip, fill out a form and let them know what kind of sport you need. And one of the options is I want to take action on my trip. I knew someone, I went to high school with him. The next day he took over the If Not Now social media uh, to do If Not Now. So let's please play to the rest that this is not a filmed speech, like there are social media takeovers. It's part of a campaign. And that's okay. You're allowed to protest Israel, but you're taking away dollars from low-income people who can come when there's plenty you know, of trips you know, that are specifically a, about discussing the occupation. Is absolutely ridiculous, considering Sheldon Adelson, one of the richest billionaires in America, is the funder of Taglit Birthright Program. And Sheldon Adelson's pro, uh, politics are very clear. We all are well aware of what he stands for and his relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. And so I think it's uh, very uh, descriptive and, and illustrative of the program, of uh, Birthright in particular, where, where they go to, to Palestine and they engage uh, in their tourism. Why are you then, saying the term Israel? Are you not, will you not say the term Israel? They don't go to Palestine, why, they don't why go to the let me finish my point. They go to and, then, and then they organize programs where Benjamin Netanyahu himself comes and speaks to the participants. And so it's clear what trip. kind of agenda, it's clear what kind of agenda this program is pushing where uh, young Jews are going and seeing Israeli soldiers meeting with individuals in the Israeli government, essentially, as, uh, as Bethany was saying, whitewashing Israel's crimes uh, in order to uh, build an image of Israel within the minds of, uh, of, of so many young Jews uh, to, 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 to establish uh, a, 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 a politic within their minds about what Israel stands for. And I think that is absolutely incorrect. Let me just add How something. How do you get to decide for Jews? Let, let me just stands? add this, because we actually spoke to Taglik Birthright. They sent us a statement for this conversation. A couple of things that they noted. Have a look here on our laptop, my laptop here. Uh, welcoming feedback from participants on ways that educational programming can be enhanced, but then skipping to this current trend of disrupting tours, we will not tolerate political activist groups leveraging our platform to generate publicity for their causes. I'm not sure what that lack of toleration actually means for the future. We have a little bit of time left. I want to give it to the community. Malika. Well, we just got this live from Ryan on YouTube. He says, why not just make a free trip that includes Palestine and addresses the injustices face? I think more people would be open to it, especially the younger generations. Tahir, I'm going to give this one to you, but in the form of tell us very briefly, because we're almost out of time in this show, what does it take for you to be able to plan a trip to Palestine? Uh, we have many things to take into consideration, uh, security primarily one of them. And, and one of the main things that Palestinians think about when you're thinking about going to Palestine is uh, the, the, uh, the overshadowing uh, threat of denial, uh, which many of us face on uh, whether we're crossing the Allenby Bridge from Jordan into Palestine or landing uh, in Ben Gurion Airport. And so this is one of the things that is a major problem for us, that we, we, our, our, our return is not guaranteed. There's no, there's no right to return for Palestinians, uh, even though we are the indigenous inhabitants of that homeland. And so uh, are whereas, Jews. Jews where, are just as indigenous. Whereas, whereas young Jews uh, have immediate birthright uh, upon arrival. And so this is the contradiction that we see here. This is the problem that we see here. And this is why programs like Birthright we see are a problem because they continue uh, to exacerbate uh, uh, the issue uh, at hand. Yeah. Um 
Ariel, you wrote uh, an op-ed that asked us to check our privilege. And um, I think that's a great point, but I think privilege is nuanced. Mm. So we have privilege when we can walk through airport security and just say birthright to get through. And we have privilege when we can that's show our, true, our they ask you American passport and get through security to checkpoints Bethany, safely. To Bethany, to here, Ariel, and also Ben, this is part of a huge conversation that continues to rumble on. Thank you so much for bringing that debate to us here on the stream. Blake and I will always see you online. We're on Twitter at AJStream. See you next time.